Hi folks, Howard Gustafson with Raglan Piano Company for another video in our series about converting acoustic pianos to digital pianos. Today we're going to talk about the teardown and prep of an acoustic piano like this one right here, a large upright piano. 90% of them are going to, going to come apart like this one or similar to this one. There may be variations that are just beyond the scope of a video like this, but we're going to tear this one down and give you the basics. So here we go. In most cases, the lid's going to fold back, whether it's hinged in the middle or the entire piece folds back. And let's talk about the tools. Generally, I'll have a pair of pliers. I'll have a couple of sizes of flathead screwdrivers. I'll go ahead and keep a Phillips head screwdriver with me on the odd chance that somebody has replaced screws in the past. But in most cases, all you're really going to need is going to be a medium-sized slotted screwdriver. All right, now the lid, Daryl, come on around here. Let's take a look at these latches right here. Maybe you can get in on this latch right here. A whole lot of these just have a flip latch like this one right here that flips up, or there'll be a piece of wood that rotates or any number of different mechanisms that latch it in place. And then some of them just have a hook that sits on a peg and it lifts straight off. This one has the latches. I'm gonna move this latch right here. Then we're gonna go ahead and tilt that forward a little bit, lift it up and set it out of the way. And that is what is properly called the upper frame panel, nicknamed front board. Now, sometimes you'll take this upper frame panel off and the post that you see right here, show them that post right there. The post that you see here will actually be screwed into the sides of the piano. Now this one, it all came out as one assembly, uh, but it won't be difficult to see if those posts need to be unscrewed if your piano is that way. Music shelf, most of the time, it's going to be a single screw on each side. We undo those screws and this comes out. Keep track of your screws because you will be using these when you put the piano back together again in all likelihood. Music shelves out of the way. All right, the key cover or fall board is next. There's a couple of different ways I see these installed. Most of the time, come on around here, Daryl. It's gonna be a single screw, again, on each side like this one has right here. On occasion, there will not be a screw here and you'll have to undo hinges on each side. But this one has the single screw, so we're gonna take those out right there. Okay, and the key cover is going to be out of the way. Next, we're going to take out, uh, we'll go ahead and take the cheek blocks out, and they are usually held in place by a screw that's recessed in here. On occasion, you'll find another screw or a single screw under here going through the key bed into the cheek block. That's very common on grand pianos. On uprights, most of them are going to have a screw back here, and usually the hole is going to be filled with 80 years worth of dust. So you may have to hunt around for it for a while. That's out of the way. Yes, so there's the cheek block. That one's out of the way. There's a dowel underneath most of them in the front and a screw in the back like that. So we're going to get that one loose and this one over here. Oh, there's a ton of junk in that one. All right. Whew. That one was difficult to get out because there are a lot of times, as I mentioned previously, there's a lot of dirt and junk. And, ah, oh, there's my screw right there. And they'll be stripped out you won't be able to get very much bite with your screwdriver. So you just keep at it till it comes out. If you have to, while nobody's looking, you jerk it out of there. Okay, so that's got the cheek blocks out. Now we're gonna take off this key slip right here. And it is usually held in place by four or five screws that go through the key bed here into the key slip. So right here is one, I can feel it right there. And sometimes they're missing. So you just have to, have to hunt around, and if there's not one there, go on to the next one. But there'll 
usually be four to five holes. So four to five screws and the key slip comes off. While I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and take the lower frame panel off. Some people call it the kickboard or the bottom board, although the actual bottom board is the bottom board on the piano. So most lower frame panels are going to be held in place by one or two springs. This one has one spring right here holding it in place. And there's a cute little finger hole to put your finger in there and uh, pull forward. So we're going to push up on this spring clip right here and then pull forward. And the board usually sits on a couple of locating dowels on the bottom edge there and just lifts right off. And you can see the locating dowel right there and one right there. Set it out of the way. Okay, that's most of the case parts that we're going to take off for this conversion, at least for the moment. Depending on the style of digital piano you want to put in there and how far you want to take things, we may continue on. And for the purpose of this video, we will go ahead and we're going to pull the key bed off. We're going to take the legs off. We're going to get the strings and the plate out. But for now, let's focus on, the, on removing the action and removing the key set. A pair of pliers is handy here. Sometimes the action uh, bolts here are on very, very tight. Now, just a quick word. If you have an old upright piano where the action is in pretty good shape and it won't stay in tune, and the reason you're considering a digital conversion is because of a tuning issue, it's worth looking into, especially if you've had parts replaced in the past, it's worth looking into utilizing the existing action and key set. We sell all the parts needed uh, to recondition, to rebuild a piano action, to rebush keys, to refelt the key bed. We have all of that uh, on hand. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, so if, if you've got a, a reasonably well-functioning action, it's worth considering retaining that for use with your digital uh, install and still getting rid of the strings and plate. I'm going to keep on going with this one right here. So if you were to keep, decide to keep your action and key set, you want to hang on to your bolts, you want to hang on to the action posts here. Uh, after all of this is removed, you put the action post back in. You'd also keep the posts here in the key bed, which we'll be removing later because we're putting a brand new uh, set of keys and an action in this. But you would want to retain everything pertaining to the action and keys for reinstallation after the plate and strings are gone. Now, in most cases, there may be a dowel to disconnect here in the front. And then sometimes there's dowels in the back. Usually those will come on out when you tilt the action forward and pull the action. So in pulling the action, we're just going, we've undone those bolts there. We've removed the one rod here in the front that is uh, for the uh, hammer rail. And we're going to just lean this forward and then pick it straight up. And that entire action simply comes out. Now, as far as removing keys, also a very simple task. Now, one of the things you want to do is be aware of just reaching your hand underneath the keys. There's going to be debris underneath there. But proper removal of the keys, what I will do is I'll usually reach for the front and the back edge of the key and lift it straight up. These holes, these are supposed to be round holes that fit these round key pins. And if you just pry up on one end, very often these will be ovaled out and then you'll have what's called a pulley key and the key will pull back and forth. Let's see, these, don't, these are pretty good as far as, as far as back and forth, which would be a pulley key, but you can see the bushings are worn out. Lots and lots of side play here on these keys. When I say bushing, I'm referring, well, that bushing's like gone. It's supposed to have felt in it like that one right there, but that is a common 
item to wear out on an old piano. If you were going to retain your original key set, you would want to replace all of the key bushings. Uh, sometimes key tops themselves are bad. That would need to be replaced. Somebody has replaced the key tops on this one, but they did not file them to fit. Key tops, plastic key tops, are made oversized on purpose because different manufacturers have slightly differing key widths. They're all relatively standard as far as approximately 48 inches from the left key to the right, but uh, the, the actual widths and where the sharps are can change. So you can see this one actually needed to be filed right here because it is, uh, that's going to rub on the key next to it. All right, well, we're going to be done with these anyway, so we're going to pull all of these out. Okay, we've got the keys out, and the next step is to remove the key frame. The frame is comprised of the front rail, the balance rail, and the back rail, and there will be usually four or five screws on each rail holding it in place. So we're going to go ahead and remove the key frame as soon as I find my screwdriver. Ah, there it is. All right, here we go. All right, once all the screws are out, it'll just lift right out and you can set it off to the side. Now we are nearly done with the initial phase of the uh, disassembly. Here's another one of the dowels for the trap work system. We're just gonna pull it out, move it off to the side. At this point, we're gonna start doing some of the smaller things like taking these posts out because we're not reusing the original action or keys. We'll remove and discard these posts and we're going to detension and remove all the strings and tuning pins. So we're going to cut it here, and I'll be right back.